Okay. So I wanted to do a few extra problems for you guys involving infinite series, some stuff at the root and ratio tests. Um, so let's just do it. I don't know why this always defaults to that resolution. That's for sure. So I don't want to spoil any good stuff from your homework. But there are a handful of pretty famous problems that there just isn't enough time to look at everything, you know? So I wanted to show you a few of my favorites. Um, this is a good one. At a glance, it's kind of hard to see what's gonna happen here. Uh, you've got an infinite series and the numerator of the sum end is n factorial, which is one of the fastest growing sequences we have. The denominator is something weird though too, it's n to the n. Um, and we don't know a whole lot about this. I don't even know if I included this in the little growth rates thing. Um, so you guys especially don't know much about this and that's okay. But uh, the question is we don't, it's hard to see even right away if this passes test for divergence. So what we wanna do is um, classify as um, absolutely convergent Conditionally convergent. Uh, or divergent. You can try test for divergence. You have to remember this right. This says if the limit of the ANs, so forget about sigma for a minute, if the limit as n goes to infinity of the ans. If this is anything other than zero, then the series diverges. If this is zero, we don't learn shit. Totally inconclusive, we have no idea. So here, that's then n to infinity, n factorial over n to the n. Weird looking already. Write out the factorial. And it's still pretty hard to see what's going on. Upstairs, you have n terms. Downstairs, you really have n terms also, right? This is n times n times n times n, n times. One cheeky way I've seen people argue this limit, this is a, a tricky limit, be square about that. Both of the limits we're gonna encounter on this problem are tricky. One way I've seen people argue this, and I don't like it, so, is that this is lim n to infinity, n over n times n minus one over n times n minus two over n all the way down to three over n times two over n times one over n. When I say I don't like this, what I mean is that I feel like it's a little bit shaky. Um, but each of these terms go to one. As n goes to infinity, and each of these terms go to zero as n goes to infinity. Um, I would accept that as an argument at our level, but it's certainly not rigorous. Um, you could build an inequality and show that the sum is zero. But in any case, you end up with a bunch of ones and a bunch of zeros, or at least one zero. So this is equal to zero. So TFD is inconclusive. All 
right? Remember, if the limit of the ANs is not zero, the series automatically diverges. But if the limit of the ANs is zero, it could go either way. We don't learn anything. Because there is a factorial in the series, my next stop is going to be the ratio test. Anytime your series has a factorial in it, ratio test is a nice game to play um, because it gives you, in the positive case, not just convergence, but absolute convergence, so that saves you time. Um, and it's also not a bad test to run compared to things like the integral tests that take, take quite a while. So the lim, uh, I'll try this, L equals the lim minus n goes to infinity times n plus one over an. And plus one here. Just take the ends and replace them by n plus one. Downstairs you'll have n plus one, because there's an n there, raised to the n plus one. There was an n there. So that's a n plus one. Uh, and I'll multiply by the reciprocal of a n. Instead of writing the division, I'll just do the flip and multiply right away. Uh, everything here is positive. So I can forget about the absolute values from here on. I can start grouping terms. n plus 1 factorial is n plus 1 times n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way down to 3 times 2 times 1 n to the n is n to the n. Downstairs you have n plus one raised to the power of n plus one. That's n plus one to the n times n plus one to the one. This is one of your rules for exponents from algebra. If you have two like bases, you multiply them, you add the powers. I'm using it backwards here. I'm using it to say, okay, well this could have come from something like this to the n times this to the one, because it's n plus one. And then n factorial is n times n minus one times n minus two, all the way down to three times two times one. A lot of stuff cancels. Not everything, but a lot of stuff. Uh, for example, n plus one and n plus one cancel. The copy of n factorial here that's hiding inside n plus one factorial, he cancels with this. So what's left is n to the n upstairs and n plus one to the n downstairs. which is the same as rules for exponents, n over n plus one, all to the n. Uh, at a glance, the inside here is going to one. The power is going to infinity. This looks like one to the infinity, which is an indeterminate form. Uh, so we're in a bit of a spot. If you want to get out of the spot, the trick is to ask yourself, where the fuck else have I seen indeterminate forms that look like one to the infinity? Not a lot of places. That e to the ab limit from class. Slide this somewhere. Remember that when n to infinity one plus a over n all raised to the power of b n. That limit is e to the a times b. So this kind of looks like that. So recall. This is an indeterminate form of the shape one to the infinity because a over n goes to zero bn will go to infinity. So this looks like one to infinity just like that does. So maybe I can turn this into something like that for some specific choice of a and b. So I'm trying to rewrite this. 
if you long divide inside. n divided by n plus 1 is an improper rational function that's being raised to the n here. We want to see what this is. We want to try and make this look more like this. So I long divide the top by the bottom, or you can use what I like to call the add and subtract trick. See what I've done in here is I've added zero in a clever fashion. So I'm not changing the value of the numerator. I'm adding zero to the numerator. You can also long divide. Long division works fine. This is just a way to do it faster. So then you get, you split this up and you get n plus one over n plus one plus, uh, minus, yeah, minus one over n plus one. All raised to the power of n. That hasn't changed. n plus one over n plus one cancels. You get one minus one over n plus one raised to the n. A few ways to handle it from here. Uh, you can make a little substitution. Uh, if I advance these guys by one, uh, I see that this is really the same thing as one minus one over n raised to the, uh, sorry, uh, n minus one. And now this is looking an awful lot like my limit, my e to the a b limit. In fact, an even faster way to do this, if I come back here, uh, so what will this do? Sorry, let me finish this line of thought. That's the same as the limit as n goes to infinity of one minus one over n to the n times one minus one over n. That's the same as the limit as n goes to infinity of one plus negative one over n raised to the one times n. And this piece is one minus one over n. So here I'm just identifying a and b. So a is negative one and b is one in my formula. Formula at the top, result at the bottom. So this now looks like my e to the ab limit. This piece goes to one minus zero, which is one. So out drops then n to infinity. Actually, I don't even need to write the limit anymore, do I? This piece goes to one. This piece by my formula goes to e to the a times b which is e to the negative one or one over e, which is definitely less than one. So the series, so hence, the series sigma n from one to infinity n factorial over n to the n converges absolutely. L is equal to one over E, which is less than one, All right? This is by the root test. Uh, sorry, ratio test this time. All right. This is a good problem. It's a funky series. Not the easiest thing in the world to work with. And it's one of the places where you run into that special limit we discussed from class. one or two others. I think we did the one of the, the alternating one over n factorial series, the regular one over n factorial series has been fun. Mm. Or it's easy. But um this one's fun. So again, classify as absolutely convergent, conditionally convergent, or divergent. Yeah.
here I have so classify. I have a bunch of stuff raised to the N. Uh, this makes me think, makes me want to try the root test. So let's do it. L is the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of the absolute value of a n. And you should always write down what you're going to do before you do it. Makes your work easier to follow. Also makes it easier for me to give you partial credit. Equals lim n to infinity nth root of uh, the absolute value of 2 to the 1 over n. All right, that's what the the nth root of two there is minus one to the n and absolute value and nth root. All this stuff is being raised to the nth power, and that nth power can commute with the absolute value, so he pops up and cancels with the root. So I get two to the one over n minus one. To the n under my nth root. And now the nth root and the nth power cancel, right? Nth root, nth power. Nth root is the same as 1 over n, right? So 1 over n times n, however you like to think about it, they undo each other. So this is the limb as n goes to infinity of 2 to the 1 over n minus 1. Okay, so if you want the details here, that's 2 to the 1 over n minus 1, all raised to the are all absolute valued nth and then one over n. So that's two to the one over n minus one to the n times one over n, which is two to the one over n minus one all to the one. So that's where we land. And uh, this guy is going to zero. So that's two to the zero minus one, that's one minus one, that's zero. And for the root test, that's good news. That's good news. So L is equal to zero, which is less than one. Therefore, the series sigma two to the one over N minus one all to the N converges absolutely. This is a fun problem, good root test problem. The shape of the series there is kind of interesting. You don't see a lot of those. Mm. Or I haven't seen a lot of them, forgive me, I'm eating some soup. So, this guy kind of strange. Converges absolutely. Question, does this nth power help this converge, or does it make it harder for it to converge? Does this nth power help this thing converge, or does this nth power make it harder for the thing to converge? This guy. So this guy, this power, is this making things better or worse for the series? Well, two to the one over n, as 
What kind of numbers are those? Those are roots of two. So if I graph, forget graphing, let's just calculate some. Two to the one half, that's the square root of two, that's like 1.4. Two to the one third, smaller. Two to the one fourth, smaller still. Two to the one fifth, maybe it's not a pattern, maybe this looks like it. Two to the one sixth. I'll die before I can check all of these, but uh, looking at these numbers, they definitely appear to be getting smaller. And they are, it's a monotone sequence. And they're getting closer and closer to one. Uh, they're a little bit larger than one, so if you subtract one from each of these, you get numbers that are getting closer and closer to zero. Which means that if you think of this as being kind of like a geometric series, because you've got a bunch of stuff raised to the end, if you think about this as being kind of like a geometric series, the question, does that n help or hurt, depends on whether this is this bigger or smaller than one. And here, uh, if it was bigger, then the n power would be hurting. If it were smaller, the n power would be helping. Uh, and of course, this is smaller, right? That's what we just saw. So the nth power is helping. Um, because when you raise numbers that are between negative one and one to larger and larger powers, uh, that makes the numbers smaller still. Right? So if I were to come back through here and raise each of these to the power that they're raised to in the series, you're going to see that number. Sorry, my wife is calling me. So pause for a minute. I'll be zoom recording. Okay, there it is. So we should be back. Uh, what we said is that because the nth power here um, is being applied to something that's smaller than one, uh, the nth power makes things smaller. And I think I started, no, no, never mind, no. I, think I started raising these to powers to help you see that. So we'll raise each of these to the powers. They are, uh, they appear in the series. So if I square this guy, you'll see him get smaller, right? And if I uh, cube this guy, because in the series he's raised to the third power, he'll get smaller. And that's it. So this, this would continue happening. So he's helping. So what if I get rid of it? Same game. How about this one? Oh, I should say while I'm here that um, even if this wasn't the root test, I would know that this convergence was absolute because all the series, all the terms of the series are positive. So it's absolute value series is the same as himself. All right. So I do have to dip to go grab my wife in a second. Same series, just no n on the outside. Instead of raising that whole thing to the nth power, what happens if I just leave it alone? In other words, what about this series? So what I, I kind of need to know is how fast does two to the one over n minus one decay to zero? All right, it does. I mean, by TFD it does. because here the limit as n goes to infinity, two to the one over n minus one, that's the limit of the a n, so that's two to the zero minus one is one minus one is zero. So we looked at, at this piece of the limit uh, last time. Uh, remember, of course, this is inconclusive. If the limit of the a n's is zero, we don't learn anything from TFT. But we want to know how fast is that going to zero. So let me let me consider the corresponding function f of x, which is two to the one over x minus one, and take its derivative. 
2 to the 1 over x differentiates to 2 to the 1 over x times the natural log of 2 times negative 1 over x squared. And 1 differentiates to 0. In particular, I see this 1 over x squared derivative. I see the derivative of 1 over x showing up. As x goes to infinity, this piece This piece goes to ln2, uh, 2 to the 0 times ln2, which is 1 times ln2, which is constant. So as x goes to infinity, this piece doesn't contribute a lot to the derivative. This is the real important piece. For the growth rate, or actually in this case, uh, dk. I don't want to say decay rate because that means something specific to college algebra students. I don't want to confuse you, but, um, but the speed at which the thing grows or decays, right? The derivative. You've got a piece that's more or less constant and a piece that rapidly goes to zero. So I propose that we run a limit comparison test with something that grows or decays at a similar speed, namely, this, because negative 1 over x squared is the derivative of 1 over x. All right. I'm going to tab back and make sure I'm not messing things up with my y. It hasn't sent me the address yet. OK. Um, the limit, so limit comparison test says calculate c is the limit as n goes to infinity of a n over b n. If this is positive and finite, then the series do the same thing. So sigma b n here, sigma 1 over n. So I think this diverges. That's what I'm saying. This is lim n to infinity 2 to the 1 over n minus 1 divided by 1 over n. There's no amount of algebra you can do here to try and make this work. Um, you need L'Hopital's rule. At a glance, this looks like 2 to the 0 minus 1 over 0. Uh, which is 1 minus 1 over 0, which is 0 over 0. So, yeah, L'Hopital's rule. The derivative upstairs. I'm going to go ahead and use n's um, because I'm being sloppy. I don't like doing it because you can't differentiate sequences. Um, but you know what I mean. Uh, if you want to replace these with x's, you know, be very, very careful. You can. Um, but I'm losing patience. So 2 to the 1 over n differentiates to 2 to the 1 over n times negative 1 over n squared. Chain rule. 1 differentiates to 0. Uh, oh, and there's a natural log of 2. Yeah. Um, and then downstairs, I get negative 1 over n squared. These cancel. You get lim n to infinity 2 to the 1 over n log 2, which goes to 2 to the 0, because 1 over n goes to 0 times natural log of 2, which is ln2. ln2 is positive and finite. I think 0 0.6, I forget, is positive and finite. So our series does the same as, does the same thing. as sigma 1 over n, namely our series diverges. OK. So this is where I'm going to leave it. These are three fun examples that I like a lot. Um, and I thought they might help you get a little bit more comfy with the root and ratio test Wednesday tomorrow. Uh, sorry, not tomorrow, but the day after tomorrow. Uh, is our review. So you guys should bring lots and lots and lots of problems that you want solved. Make sure they're problems that you've worked on so our discussion is meaningful um, and we'll do as many as we can. Right? That's it. Bye guys.